We are going live in five, four, three. We are live. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcoming you all to in today's fellows academic round. Today we have few interesting cases that will be presented by fellows, and uh, our keynote speaker is Dr. Uh, Anil Agarwal, uh, and he will deliver his speech on osteoarticular tuberculosis in children and their verified presentation and diagnosis. Me along with Dr. Shalin will be the moderator of this session. And you all are requested to keep your uh, microphone mute and put your questions in the chat box. Regarding Dr. Anil Agarwal, Shalin, can you share the PowerPoint presentation? I can't share it from this screen. Yes, I have started sharing. Okay. so. Uh, he is the head of pediatric orthopedic surgery uh, at Chacha Nehrubal Chikishalai and over 200 uh, publications with a book uh, that named Osteoarticular Infection. Next. Yeah, yeah so this is the uh, main thing about infection. So that is one of the, uh, uh, one of the final say for pediatric osteoarticular infections. And uh, today he'll be talking about uh, Osteoarticular about the same thing, and uh, he'll enlighten us with his knowledge over the years. So over to you, sir. Okay, welcome, you, Dr. Adi Lagarwal. Thank you, sir, for being here. Please proceed. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So we start directly with the presentation. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Is it full screen now? Yes, yes sir. sir. Full screen. Okay, great. So the presentation is made keeping the fellows in the mind. So what we know classically about pediatric tuberculosis or of or tuberculosis is that there is a bones complex in the lung, and then the bacteria disseminates to other part of the body, and then there is a reactivation with a high and the, in this lesion, the hypersensitivity component is also very much high. But in children, there is an entirely different phenomena which goes on. The immunity in children is low. And with no prior exposure to tuberculosis, the bones focus are formed in the bones. So when you see a case of podiatric tuberculosis case, they are potentially infected. Do not confuse them with the adult type of tuberculosis. The government of India introduced the dose therapy for treatment of tuberculosis. I use this acronym for a wider sense. We have to suspect, diagnose, treat, and evaluate the outcome as well. So the dictum first is that we live in a country and also the Asian subcontinent where TB is endemic. So they are wide variety of presentation of tuberculosis and you have to suspect tuberculosis for every infection, infective case you see. This can be very much likened to seven blind men touching the elephant at different places and this very much correctly illustrates the scenario of tuberculosis in osteopediatric osteoarticular tuberculosis. So let's recapitulate the bone differentials which we commonly see in our outdoor practice. So they are cyst-like lesions, tumors, we have conditions like pathological fractures, we have list of infections, and then we have soft tissue lesions. And the tuberculosis can mimic any of them. So let's begin by sharing a few examples. So this is a classical case of tuberculosis. The pus is oozing out, there is a swelling, there is a contracture, there is deformity. Okay, but you can have a lot more than that. You can have this ill-defined lesion, which can be confused with anything. You have this epiphyseal lesion. You have this lesion with a sequestrum. You have this ill-defined leucenses in the bone. You have a parthoid type presentation in the hip. You have dislocations related to tuberculosis. And you have a miliary presentation in which everything is studied with bacteria. You have well circumscribed, circumscribed lesions in the calcaneum. And you have expansive lesions in the metatarsals. 
Now, recent tuberculosis share a very uh, uh, special features in tuberculosis, and I will elaborate a few of them. So, in hand, it is commonly confused with the enchondromas. So, this picture is commonly confused with the uh, enchondroma. Shoulder tuberculosis can present in two forms. It can be dry or it can have an exudator type of appearance. In both, there is marked wasting and there is painful movement restriction. Elbow tuberculosis, we published a big series on this. So there is a scoop type appearance, ice cream scoop type appearance in the tuber in tubercular elbow. And whenever you see this, please do suspect a tuberculosis diagnosis in these cases. Dr. Anil Mehtani from Delhi, has published extensively on risk tuberculosis and they say that if you they have categorized into responders and non-responders and for non-responders they have identified these features when the symptoms have been already there for more than 10 weeks the ESR is very high the lesion is accompanied with skin ulcerations multiple lesions or presence of sinuses then there are more chances of the lesion being non-responding or there is a requirement of surgery our own experience with uh, risk tuberculosis have been uh, nearly similar, but for smaller lesions, we have found that curettage and anti-tubercular work very well, but for large lesions, we have to restore for bone grafting. Few examples, this case I have already shown before. So there was a lesion here, you opened it, you saw a pus, you sent it for confirmation, diagnosis tuberculosis, just started ATT and the lesion healed well. But the other case with a big lesion abutting the epiphysis, there were chances that this epiphysis will deform. So we put up a bone graft here and the lesion healed finally. Knee tuberculosis in children have slightly different presentations. So what you find that there is an hourglass type of appearance. And when, when you start ADT, uh, this epiphyseal this epiphyseal plate which is supposed to offer resistance to spread of bacteria doesn't uh, hold true for tuberculosis and epiphyseal agents are fairly common with me but the correct thing, thing is that the joint space is not reduced and it is maintained following treatment so and with the synovial variety as well the knee range of motion is fairly preserved till late. So these are the three conditions in which, despite being a tuberculous condition, the knee range of motion is fairly preserved. Then we come to foot and ankle. You can find a classical kissing lesions in case of tuberculosis of ankle, and you will have also epiphyseal lesions of the lower end of the fibula. Then you can have rheumatoid presentation in which the bones collapse together. For two bones, you have to be very particular. One is the cuboid and other is the talus. Here, the tuberculosis infection is associated with vasculitis and avian features. Tuberculosis of calcaneum, you have two presentations. One is the cystic type. Here, the prognosis is good. But the other type in which there is subtalar infection, the prognosis is poor because the joint collapses soon. Spine. We published a 22 case series on uh, conservative treatment of the cervical spine. This article uh, attracted much attention and there was an editorial comment by none other than Dr. Ashok Jori on this article. So what we found that you can achieve good results with conservative treatment, just no surgeries are required, even in cases with neurological affection and the bad prognostic features is when you have consecutive vertebral involvement which involve more than 50 percent of the height of vertebra to give you an example here is a case in which you find two consecutive vertebra there is abscess just by starting of att the lesion healed well and you can appreciate a bony fusion in the follow-up x-rays to give you a few Quick update around regarding the new developments in the spinal tuberculosis. Use of implants is now no longer considered 
uh, uh, contraindication in presence of tubercular infections. You can very well use pedicles to titanium mesh autographs and even do subtraction osteotomies in cases of uh, kyphotic kyphosis due to tuberculosis. Now there are several atypical presentations related to tuberculosis. The foremost is the acute presentation. Here the signs are present just for 10 to oh, almost 28 days, but we, uh, our study said, and you will have, you cannot distinguish between acute suppurative infection and tuberculosis. We also were not aware of this entity and we used to drain, but when the lesion didn't heal in this particular case, we took a edge biopsy and sent the tissue for histopath, which came out to be tuberculosis. So the duration of symptoms can anywhere between four to 28 days. This has close resemblance to acute suppurative infections and diagnosis will be missed if you just send aerobic and anaerobic cultures for your abscesses. Then can be multifocal osteoarticular tuberculosis in children, two lesions, 12 lesions, almost in every part of the body. But there was an interesting observation. All these patients were immunocompetent and the appendicular involvement was much more than the axial one. Residual deformities and restriction of joint movements were so common in these patients. Epiphyseal tuberculosis, I have shared a chapter with Dr. Molly and most of our cases were tubercular rather than staph. So what I will show you an example, you can see a swelling, the range of motion was well preserved. And you can, when we got an MRI, you can see an enhanced lesion at the edge of the tibial epiphysis. The epiphyseal lesion can occur in other bones as well, like shoulder. The treatment remains the same, the curators. And post-treatment, you must uh, be aware that these lucencies can persist for several months. And uh, what we believe that they, these are filled with fibrous tissue after the conservative treatment. And there are rare sites and rare case reports regarding the clavicle, sternum, and the uh, great toe, but we will not discuss them here. So we move on to the next section of the talk, that is the diagnosis. And I think this is the most important for the fellows. If your findings strongly suspect tuberculosis infection, you should put effort to prove otherwise. Okay, we have now almost in our my center achieved a ninety percent success rate of diagnosis, uh, histopathological diagnosis of, of getting a histopathological diagnosis of tuberculosis in the cases we suspect tuberculosis, and this is the methodology we apply. So. How do we diagnose tuberculosis? We have three modalities, like in every case, imaging, laboratory, and clinical rhodological basis. And in imaging, you have a whole spectrum of uh, modalities available, but the findings are generally non-specific. The imaging helps us to localize the lesion and to know the involvement. Regarding the blood investigations, nothing is again specific. And we do not use IgM and IgG antibodies against tuberculosis nowadays. The ESR can be used to monitor the disease activity in cases in, it, in which it was raised initially. The main problem is sample collection. What we usually do when we uh, operate upon an abscess case or an infective case, we usually send persons for aerobic and aerobic culture and tissue for histopath. Let's see how this behaves. So when you eat a, when you have this example of Nariel Pani, so you have a liquid and you have a malai portion, okay? So when you put the needle in the abscess, okay? The center portion is composed of necrotic tissue and dead material, okay? So, so when you aspirate the abscess and send it for aerobic and anaerobic culture, the yield is low. The tubercular bacteria is a sort of royal bacteria which like to live near the blood vessels. So unless you take tissues from the edge, you are most likely to miss it. So what we do, we obtain at least nine to 10 samples for every case suspected of tuberculosis, starting from the skin edge, pus, granulation tissue, soft tissue, bone curatings, lymph node, 
and in case of joint synovial tissue joint fluid and all other involved sites in one go and send them for multiple tests do we understand the importance of this methodology sorry yeah when you see this table so when you aspirate from the center of a abscess and send it for afb staining your positivity rate is just 10 to 30% and if you say that your uh, lesion was not tuberculosis you are mistaken you send it for solid culture media again your culture sensitivity can vary anywhere between 30 to 80% okay so both the method you have employed and still your combined success rate will vary from 40 to 100% so if you have obtained multiple samples okay any of one of them will uh, reflect the bacteria nowadays this test molecular analysis have increased the both specificity and sensitivity related to tuberculosis one thing i want to touch which is also commonly used in our outpatient department is the tuberculin test and the correct interpretation of this test so we all know how it is done it is the induration not the erythema which is read less than uh, greater than or equal to 5 mm means that the patient has a prior exposure with tuberculosis greater than 10 mm there is an increased risk of infection and greater than 5 mm in a child greater than 4 years requires tst when the tests are negative they don't mean anything something more about the zine expert type which is coming in a big way for tubercular diagnosis so this study shows and more studies related to this shows that there is a specificity of nearly 100% and a high sensitivity rate now there is one more uh, common thing which we do in our country that we start the tuberculosis treatment just on the basis of radiology and clinical examination and we cite this most quoted reference from uh, uh, professor tulis book that in developing countries in general the diagnosis of tuberculosis of bone and joint can reliably be made on clinical and radiological examination i have shown you a host of conditions which can mimic tuberculosis and i do not feel that this statement is entirely true so try to obtain a sample whenever possible and sometimes obtaining sample is so simple if you employ the current diagnostic methods we move on to the treatment section so we always say it's anti tubercular treatment but the patient also requires supporting treatment in form of analgesics build up therapy mobilize immobilization braces and surgery in designated cases so do not forget these remaining this is just one cat one thing and these are the five things you must also take into account because this will be bring response in 6 weeks to 3 months but these will be this will bring response immediately there are five rights for drug administration the right patient drug dose route and time for tuberculosis it's a bit different you have to choose the genuine drugs the right dose the right combinations right duration and the interrupted uninterrupted course we <laughs> examine this uh, this pattern also uh, how people prescribe tuberculosis anti tubercular drugs in our countries and to our surprise there were 32 prescriptions in an interview of 52 respondents and most variations were noted with ethambutol so people our clinician are giving ethambutol anywhere between 0 to 18 months the government of india introduced index tb guidelines 2016 and recently there have been further amendments in the tubercular anti tubercular treatment broadly i will not go into the details so nowadays you give fixed dose combinations with the intensive phase lasting for 2 months and the continuation phase going on for uh, 4 to 10 months depending upon the region the isonizide is given in the doses of not 5 mg which we used to remember 5 10 15 and 25 it's given in the doses of 10 mg and we have to supplement with pyridoxine okay and it's a daily regime the alternate day regime is now no longer practiced so it works miraculously you can see the multiple site lesions and after 6 months of anti tubercular treatment everything healed and the child was up and 
upright and ambulatory on limbs although there was bony fusion in this case the role of surgery you must know is mainly for acute cases mainly to obtain tissue and when your lesion is not responding for spinal cases if the child presents with a neurological deficit you have to operate for stabilizing the spine along with starting of ATT. In sequelae, the indications are slightly different. You can use surgery for deformity correction. If there are late neurological deteriorations, your therapeutic outcome is not satisfactory and there is pain despite treatment. You have to identify non-responders, that is, at least if the child is not responding, even after completing a dedicated anti-tubercular course for five months, there are systemic signs which are persisting. There is no improvement. New lesions are appearing or there was wound DSS post-operatively. These are the, this doesn't mean definitely a non-responder, but if these are present, you have to investigate the child for tubercular resistance. Caution. Please start the uh, you can say treatment for resistant tuberculosis in consultation with the infection uses expert. Never add a single uh, drug. Ensure that the child is given supplementation regarding the nutrition and corrected uh, anemia. And also ensure that the medications are genuine. Now we come to the final thing, the outcome. This app, probably everyone knows the shorter is the symptom uh, treatment time, better is the diagnosis. The pure synovial involvement will generate a better response, and the response is also good in early and low grade arthritis. There are no definite endpoints of a anti tubercle treatment, but this will help you evaluate the final outcome. You have completed the ATT course, and there is no relapse of the disease at two years follow up. Your symptoms have resolved and there is a radiological supporting radiological evidence of bone healing either on pain radiograph or on MRI. So the take home message is that please include tuberculosis in differentials of your infections. If you have a cl strong clinical suspension and a history related to tuberculosis, put your effort to prove it. The main treatment for extra pulmonary tuberculosis is non-operative and you will have better outcome when the duration treatment, uh, duration treatment sim, uh, time is short. Thank you. Over to you, uh, Professor. Very nice uh, and succinct summary of uh, how to deal with tuberculosis infection and uh, very nice guide, sir. So we have already a few questions uh, coming in. One is, uh, what is the role of adding rifampicin in case of non-tubercular infections? So I think a lot of guys do this. They ask us uh, when, uh, when there are not much antibiotics which work to add rifampicin along with the IV antibiotic dose. So uh, do you have any idea with that, sir? I would recommend against it. Okay. Rifampicin is one of the first line drugs for tuberculosis. Okay. And you have to reserve it. We don't want the resistance to come against rifampicin. Okay. Then we have uh, we no. left with no other drug. So, if your lesion is not responding to classical antibiotics, please consult a infectious disease expert and you will find a way out. But starting rifampicin is not the way out. And uh, means if it's a cystic lesion, whether it's an erosive lesion, so does the type of lesion change the treatment? So, uh, I think uh, there are four different types of tuberculosis uh, uh, radiological pictures which are described. So, does the type no. of treatment? No, it's, it's regarding the establishing the diagnosis. Only in cases when the lesion is very large, okay, and it's near the epiphysis, 
tuberculosis is now like any other osteomyelitis if the lesion is large and you expect there is going to be a pathological fracture or uh, there is a collapse of bone likely during the course of treatment go ahead bone graft it and start the anti anti tubercular treatment okay rest no differentiation between any kind of uh, radiological presentation yes sir um and what are your uh, uh, indications for getting an mri means when it is near the uh, epiphysis or physis do you get an mri or uh, it's a routine for diagnosis of all chronic osteomyelitic cases i have already shown that mri doesn't help establish a tubercular diagnosis so mri for, for me mri is a part of investigation of any infection like i investigate a chronic osteomyelitis if i feel that the mri would help me localize the extent of the soft tissue or the extent of bony involvement i go at other with the mri otherwise i don't describe it if it is helping me localizing the lesion or to know the extent of the lesion only then i prescribe the mri i think the first case you showed was a very small child so in infants does the treatment or the matlab the uh, does it change in uh, very young cases no especially in ethambutol is considered safe nowadays in younger children as well dispersible tablets are available and for uh, other types of drugs we have syrup forms also available so my treatment doesn't change with the age of the child Professor, sir, have you any questions further? Uh, Doctor Anil Arbal, sir. Yes. Oh. I think uh, Gorosa wants to present a uh, present a case uh, case scenario. So I think we have time. Go ahead, Gorosa. Good morning, sir. I think I am audible to all of you. Yes. Yes. Please okay, sir. Thank, thank you, sir, for the wonderful presentation. It's always very, very uh, exciting to listen to you on TV. So I had recently had a case where the child had foot swelling from few months. X-ray and MRI was showing some edema and lytic lesion in the bone. I went in and did a biopsy. Didn't found any pus. Biopsy was negative for. Uh, any infection or any other it was just showing non specific inflammation i gave antibiotics for some time the wound never healed the, now it is oozing pus i had a word with the infectious disease specialist she says that we can add rifampicin and her logic is that it helps in breaking the biofilm so i don't know now the wound the wound heals and again it starts throwing some pus i try to examine the wound it is not very deep it is i mean superficial to bone but the wound is not healing so how to go for this uh gorav uh, my recommendation would be to go in again okay, okay. and uh, um you have taken already taken the opinion of the infection this is expert and i do respect her uh, uh, uh whatever she experience but If I'm saying I would like particularly like to reserve for uh, tuberculosis cases, I have already given that in my statement. So right, I would like right. to go in again and for and this time go prepared. You are suspecting a tuber. Do I, are you really suspecting a tuberculosis in this case, sir? I got all the tests, gene expert, everything. Everything was negative. I took no. sample from three sites. You have already examined it, right, sir? You have already sent multiple samples. Uh, the first time when i took the biopsy i sent multiple samples uh, wherever there was inflammation in soft tissue and bone i i sent samples mm -hmm. everything was negative so you have already examined the child histopathologically and uh, laboratory wise for tuberculosis so you can follow the advice of your infection disease expert bro right sir that, that that will be in control situations right sir okay sir repeat mri was also done after 
I mean, two MRIs have been done after monthly. Uh, how, gap. how can that help? How can that help? I just wanted to see whether there is anything left. There is any collection, or I have left something. But they all say that there is some inflammation, and nothing else. There is nothing to drain. Infections are a difficult thing, or <laughs> there is not <laughs> such, no set thing. Right, sir. Right. Sir. That was also one of the questions. So in uh, spinal tuberculosis, there is a we know a role of uh, interval MRI to know whether the AKT is working because we are treating most of them conservatively. So in other osteoarticular tuberculosis, uh, uh, not for the diagnosis, but for the treatment part, is there any role of MRI or only in those cases where we have started AKT clinically and have not been able to put up a histopathological or a microbiological diagnosis? Charlene, my, my take on this is that I do not get a MRI after I start the ATT unless the child is not clinically improving. Okay, I have already given you markers when I will label it a non-responder. Mm -hmm. You have continued the anti-tubercular treatment for five months or more than three months at least and you have ensured that the patient is taking genuine drugs and the uninterrupted course in the right dose. First, we have to ensure these things, okay, before labeling it, uh, blaming the disease on a non-resistant bacteria, okay. So, uh, I will not advise unless I have a suspicion that the child is not improving on. Okay. 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 Last two questions, I think, one from Dr. Raghavendra. Uh, what are the recommendations for duration of antitubercular anti therapy in infants? With osteoarticular tuberculosis, there are no separate uh, guidelines. Guidelines for infants, for in general, it's advised just for six months for extra pulmonary tuberculosis. But for spinal tuberculosis, the period has been extended to one year. The continuation phase is extended for ten months. Okay, but if you have, it also have a clause in it that if the clinician feels that the antitubercular treatment needs to be extended for further period, depending upon the condition of the child, he, he or she can do it. Okay. And I think Dr. Gorosar is the last question. So do you take biopsy in all spine cases or start uh, therapy based on a clinical diagnosis? Or for spine cases, because of limitation of resources, I do not go for biopsy and use the uh, clinical radiological tool. Okay, for rest and any other type of axial uh, tuberculosis, I do stain a bias because okay. So I think uh, we'll move on to the cases presentation. I think Dr. Meet will be presenting the first case. Uh, so Dr. Meet. There was, a, there was yes, a query from Dr. Molin. Yeah, I think, uh, but I don't, yeah, it's from Dr. Sudanshu. It's regarding the sternal tuberculosis paper. I don't think Molin sir is available right now. He's joined in on I'll check up with him. And sir I is think. traveling actually, so I yeah. don't think Sir has joined today. But I'll uh, get back to this on the group for these questions. Okay. Yeah. So am I audible? Yes. Yes, and screen is full screen. Go ahead. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, so today I'll be presenting a case uh, and uh, it is titled, Are All Epiphyseal Ostomides Benign? So we have a five-year-old female who presented to us with right knee swelling and limp since the last three months. We got the x-rays done and these, these are the x-ray findings. Uh, as we can see, there's a lytic area in the distal femoral epiphysis. Uh, rest, there does not seem to be any involvement of the metaphysis so far. So uh, what would be the next step for this? Unfortunately, patient, uh, we had actually advised uh, a biopsy, uh, an MRI followed by a biopsy, but patient was lost to follow up. 
So now she presented three years later with a right knee fixed flexion deformity of 40 degrees. So these are the X-rays that we currently have. As we can see, the uh, there's a deformity at the knee, and otherwise uh, there does seem to be some osteopenia of the uh, epiphysis as well, distal femoral epiphysis. So we got the MRI is done, MRI done this time, and. Uh, as we can see in the MRI, there's a lytic area. Uh, th there were lytic areas in the distal femoral epiphysis when the joint was involved now. And uh, there was complete erosion of the articular cartilage of the femoral trochlea. And uh, there was also involvement of the patellar femoral joint. The inferior surface, uh, the posterior surface of the patella was involved. This was a paper which was published in JPO 2020. Uh, it was done in uh, 18 children and uh, it was based on uh, primary epiphyseal osteom osteomyelitis. It, uh, it said that patients with tubercular epiphyseal osteomyelitis present later with the predominant symptoms being limp and swelling, whereas pain was either mild or was negligible. Whereas patients with staphylococcus uh, epiphyseal osteomyelitis, which is uh, one of the most common organisms, they present uh, relatively earlier because of the aggressive nature of the organism and uh, they presented with severe pain and an inability to bear weight over the affected limb. So uh, we went ahead for a biopsy and uh, this is uh, what we have. I've, I'll play the video right now. So as we can see, uh, we have... Uh, entered the knee joint and uh, the in, uh, there was uh, involvement of the inferior surface of the patella, the medial facet. Uh, there was also uh, severe erosion of the femoral trochlea. Uh, and uh, as, we, as we'll be able to see now, there's a defect in the distal femur. On passing a probe in the uh, epiphysis, we could uh, we could see that it connected to the joint as well, as was already seen in the MRI. So uh, we uh, sent all, all these for biopsy, and uh, the biopsy came positive for uh, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Uh, we started the patient on AKT. Uh, and uh, the AKT was continued for one year, and at the end of uh, at the end of two weeks post surgery, we removed the stitches and uh, we uh, started a gradual weight bearing for the patient. And at one month, patient could have could st gradually start bearing weight and could perform a routine activities. So this is what we started with, and then uh, we lost the patient for a duration of three years. And then this is the seven year follow up that we have. And as we can see the, the, the lytic areas have healed well, and there does not seem to be any involvement right now. So this is the seven year follow up that we have patient had a fixed flexion deformity of uh, 40 degrees. And now, as we can see her, uh, there, there does not seem to be any fixed flexion deformity at all. Thank you. In basically, what you I want to summarize the case for the fellows. Basically, what you have done through your surgeries, you have obtained a tissue. The surgery meant for anything further, and you have curated the thing out. Rest the work was done by the anti-tubercular treatment. And this is the message which I can want to convey to the fellows is that anti-tubercular drugs have a very good penetration in the joints and bones. And the only thing is to make a diagnosis, correct diagnosis. Rest the tuberculosis therapy will work correctly. Okay, so you have excellent, achieved excellent results and thank you for showing this long-term follow-up of epiphyseal tuberculosis. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Meet. And uh, a nice case in the non-benign presentation, but a very good outcome. So I think I'll invite Dr. Sheenam to present the next case. Dr. Sheenam. Yes, sir.
Uh, just give me a minute. Okay, can you see my slide? Yes, yes full screen, go ahead. Okay. Uh, as it was rightly said by Tuli sir, tuberculosis can mimic any disease and any pathology can resemble TB, both clinically and radiologically. We will see in our following two cases. This is a, a six-year-old boy presented to us with unilateral knee swelling for six months. There was a fixed flexion deformity of 40 degrees. There was gradual onset of symptoms. He was able to walk with the knee deformity. Thigh wasting was present. There was no lymph adenopathy. Father had pulmonary TB treated with oral AKT for six months before two years. Blood uh, investigations was equivocal and Montuk's test was positive. Radiograph showed a uh, periarticular osteopenia and articular surfaces were intact. Biopsy revealed non-specific chronic inflammation and he was on AKT for last four months, but there was no uh, improvement. And then uh, mother reported that he's stiff in the morning and improves as day passes. And before two years, he was also having pain at uh, other knee, which was uh, resolved with medications. Then uh, we, on the, this history, we get the RA factor and ANA test done. ANA was positive. And of the, on a thelmic examination, iridocyclitis was present. And then we treated the patient as juvenile idiopathic arthritis and then symptoms uh, resolve. You can see there is now uh, on treating it as juvenile idiopathic arthritis. The all uh, fixed flexion deformity get improved and uh, now there is no deformity. So uh, empiric uh, AKT should show clinical improvement. If it fails to show, then we should think uh, other diagnosis or it may be MDR-TB. This is a this is second case about one uh, about one and a half year old girl. She presented to us with swelling uh, along the right knee for nine months. She was vaccinated. Father had pulmonary TB, which was diagnosed nine months ago, and he was treated with uh, AKT for six months. This patient has no uh, knee flexion deformity, as we can see in the picture. There was full range of knee motion, but there was terminally painful movement. This is a radiograph. We can see there is synovial uh, thickening and squaring of epiphysis, maybe due to a uh, thick synovium pressing the epiphysis. ESR was thick, synovial fluid was suggestive of a TB, synovial biopsy confirmed. It is granuloma. Patient improved with AKT. So, uh, synovial tuberculosis may remain extra articular for long time. It can mimic juvenile idiopathic arthritis and vice versa, as we have seen in these two cases. So, summary is the spectrum of tuberculosis lesions in children is changing. The typical constitutional symptoms. And a suggestive laboratory test may not be present. Soft tissue involvement more than osteoarticular involvement should arouse the suspicion of TB. Thank you. Thank you, Shina. Thank you, sir. For these wonderful cases. Basically, uh, the message again is that you have to keep a Close. tuberculosis in the differential of your infection. Okay. Because tuberculosis is endemic in our country and it can mimic any other disease.
uh, right in this uh, this case is just a demonstration of what anil sir taught us that you have to keep a close clinical watch in cases you have not got a histopathological diagnosis and if they are not improving you should uh, uh, should raise your antennas to other diagnosis so nice two cases and good learning cases i think one one last question from dr gaurav sir and which other extra pulmonary tuberculosis cases do you start a uh, anti tuberculosis therapy on clinical or mri suspicion apart from spine so so as none. to ensure that mdrtb is not there from the start none none for all axial tuberculosis all axial lesions i tend to obtain a biopsy okay and the diagnosis of mdr is not a clinical diagnosis it's a culture diagnosis so if the culture shows a resistant bacteria you have to go for treatment that way right, so, so it's uh, so i think we have uh, finished all the cases for today and we have okay. had a great uh, uh, talk about tuberculosis so if any other questions if we have for this otherwise we will go on to conclude the session any uh, last words sir anil sir uh, just uh, send samples adequately okay and don't uh, the first sample is the primary sample which you send like gorav told he has now if you have sent the samples adequately you can be sure of your diagnosis if you have not sent the sample just send the aerobic thing and the anaerobic thing then you when the lesion doesn't heal you have a back thing going in your mind i could it be tuberculosis you have to sure you have to ensure that the diagnosis is sure in one go don't take uh, don't uh, try to obtain multiple samples like putting the child again and again under anesthesia during the first under ga examination or first under curate ga curatas please do send samples for tuberculosis so i think that would be the summary that in all of chronic osteomyelitic cases be a, should be a routine to send all the samples the aerobic culture anaerobic culture and at least one of the two either a tb mgit or a pcr gene expert according to the availability Correct. because these are the two uh, of the most sensitive tests uh, which would uh, provide us some definitive diagnosis that it is not a tuberculosis because others are not so sensitive so uh, thank you sir for your time and uh, okay. valuable insight on this topic thank you sir thank you shali thank you thank you, thank you sir sir so nice to talk with you i think we should talk again in future regarding some cases <laughs> like um, uh, the question that i didn't ask is like have you ever faced uh, atypical mycobacteria in uh, in your case series or anything like uh, the uh, the empty test is uh, sometimes false positive and sometimes false neg negative and uh, the infection disease specialist is trying one or two or three antibiotics but they are not improving well and at some point get fed up and we decide okay let's start rifampicin let's see how it behave and sometimes that behave well and then now we are in fallacy like uh, whether we need to continue that for 10 months or 6 months whether it's solely tb or not maybe we should talk later uh, in in details i i think cases have we have lost anil sir so i will have to take this question up on the group and okay. uh, thank you everyone for your time today thank you thank you bye goodbye thank you sir bye bye